Welcome back to Clarity Education Systems, also known as pmhmptesting.com. In this video, we'll take a quick look at serotonin syndrome, but first, a little background on antidepressants. They are widely used in the United States, with over 13% of adults having reported using an antidepressant within the past month. Almost every type of antidepressant will affect serotonin levels within the body to some degree. This is an important aspect of care since serotonin plays such a vital role in emotional processing. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, also known as SSRIs, work by increasing the amount of serotonin that is readily available inside the synaptic cleft between a dispensing and a receiving neuron. Other classes of antidepressant medications include serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs, and an additional atypical antidepressant class, such as Welbutrin or Bupropion. Each one of these medication classes is discussed fully during the live or online certification review seminars. We invite you to join our program to go over each of these individually and how they work to improve various diagnoses found within the DSM-5. Serotonin is a monoamine neurotransmitter. It is also known as 5-hydroxytryptamine or 5-HT. Antidepressant medications are not just for treating depression. They can be used to treat anxiety, OCD, bulimia, PTSD, and as augmentative therapy for other psychiatric conditions. Before we jump into serotonin syndrome, let's take a look at some of the other side effects that are commonly noted when patients start taking a medication that affects serotonin levels. Serotonin is involved with sleep regulation and energy. Antidepressants can cause sleep and energy disturbances. Nearly 10% of all serotonin found within the body is located in platelets. Because of this, affecting serotonin levels throughout the body can interfere with blood clotting and lead to higher risks of bleeding. The risk is low, but should be a consideration when treating a patient that is already taking a blood thinner. Almost 90% of the monoamine is located in the gut. A patient starting an antidepressant, such as an SSRI, can report abdominal symptoms such as nausea, diarrhea, and stomach pain within the first few weeks, and the patient will need education regarding these known side effects and how to prevent discontinuation of use. Common complaints by patients taking an SSRI are changes in sex drive, maintaining arousal, and reaching orgasm. The provider may need to consider other non-serotonergic antidepression options if symptoms start or continue to worsen. One option would be bupropion or welbuterin. An important point to discuss with patients that have been taking a serotonin modulator is the possibility of increased weight gain. Patients that continue on long-term treatment should be evaluated for weight gain. Finally, a big concern is overdose. Too much serotonin in the system can result in a potentially life-threatening situation known as serotonin syndrome. This can occur when a patient takes another inhibiting medication with an antidepressant or if more than one antidepressant is prescribed at a time. Okay, so let's look at serotonin syndrome more closely. Serotonin syndrome is simply a complication of having too much serotonin. This can result in a variety of symptoms. Recall that we discussed that 90% of serotonin resides in the gut. Patients commonly report excessive diarrhea due to the increased levels of serotonin, as well as shivering, hyperreflexia, increased temperature, vital sign instability such as tachycardia, hypertension, and respiratory distress, changes in mental status, restlessness, and excessive sweating. Severity of symptoms can vary greatly and may present as simply mild discomfort or can cause extreme complications, resulting in life-threatening situations that may need to be treated in the ICU. Practitioners must continue to monitor their patients closely when starting and continuing antidepressant medication. To treat serotonin syndrome, the nurse practitioner needs to withdraw the offending agent and provide supportive care to the patient. Cyproheptidine may be used as an antidote. Caution must be taken when switching from an SSRI to an MAOI and the patient will need to wait 14 days. Switching from Prozac to an MAOI will need to wait 5 to 6 weeks. And switching back from an MAOI to Prozac will need to wait 2 weeks due to the washout period. Some final reminders, SSRIs should never be taken with an MAOI, the PMHMP should avoid prescribing more than one SSRI at a time, and avoid giving herbal supplements when taking these medications. Okay, that's it for this overview. Please join us for one of our live or on-demand PMHMP certification review seminars. 
we offer both a full in-depth review and a rapid review course. Find out more at www.pmhmptesting.com or call us at 501-300-6538 and talk to one of our specialists. Bye-bye.